Hey everybody, I hope you're as excited as I am about this new uh, Orc and Goblin Arachnorok spider with the, uh, this web, the web flinger on the back and all the uh, forest goblins. I'm going to walk you through how I painted this thing up. Here's what it looks like all finished and uh, let's get started. Okay, so to begin with I've got a bunch of different pieces here. Um, I did the assembly video for you but just to recap, assembled the whole spider, glued on these legs and left these all off. They all just go in here in the little pegs, and I spray painted everything flat black spray. Um, the next step is not really shown, um, but I'm doing some things after that will kind of make up for that. So I airbrushed on a dark blue. Um, you can kind of see it there. It's a bit glossy. And then I did a light blue edging on things. Um, what I'm going to do after that is go over it a little bit with some uh, layering uh, with some GW paints. But basically just blending on the edges um, using the airbrush. So just spraying sort of on that direction, kind of get over those. Uh, sometimes I used a piece of like a, an old business card to mask behind there um, and around the back here as well. So here you can see I've started to layer. It's hard to tell actually, but I can tell. Um, there's little brush strokes here. What I'm doing is I'm doing a really thin layer of ice blue. And I'll have that paint on the next. So there we go, ice blue. And all I'm doing is I'm just doing a really thin layer just like that on all these edges here just so that it kind of brings up the edges a little bit more than the airbrush did. So the airbrush just cut out some of that step. Could have done this all using just paints but uh, decided to go the fast way just to get this painted up. Um, then what I did was I used a bit of a, a Sherm Blue wash and I kind of went over the middle parts. Um, that was just to blend things in a little bit. Anywhere the airbrush overshot things or undershot it just helps make it all a little bit more uniform. Uh, then what I did was I got the denim stone and I went over all of the areas that are going to be other colors. So the bone bits as well as the fleshy areas and inside the uh, inside all the carapace bits there that's all going to be denim stone as well. So continuing on with that and you can see I had to be a bit careful uh, in these and I touched up a little bit later uh, but in general um, I tried to get it on one nice coat and with the foundations that's pretty uh, pretty easy to get on and at one nice coverage. So here's what all the legs look like with the denim stone added onto them and I did all of the, uh, the spiny bits of denim stone as well. Uh, now I've gone with a griffin sepia wash and that's all on this area here. This is going to be fleshy bits. You can see some little spider details in there. Those will be black but painted later. Um, and uh, I'm going to be doing the uh, all the spines or the um, pincers or whatever they are. They're going to get a devil and mud wash. Okay, now that uh, this has had a devil and mud wash, all these uh, the claws, I'm going with the reaper bone triad here. So starting out with bone shadow and working my way up to uh, polished bone right at the edge. So the polished bone is just kind of going on the edges like that and the aged bone it would be kind of the middle and bone shadow almost covering all of it. Uh, red gore on the eyes and uh, they're going to get a couple layers of bow red and stuff like that. Okay now I've got ghost white and I'm just going around the edges. Um, just going to try to bring up the edge a little bit and also touching up some of the stuff around the face that I missed before. I have basically got all these uh, bony bits done and working on the base now. So huge base, new base size for this thing. Um, I used some of my, uh, this is a, was it acrylic medium with resin sand. Basically it's just sand and uh, no pigmented paint uh, mixed together. Um, this is the base uh, tree thing, spray painted a flat brown, which is kind of like a scorched brown. Um, this is just to give some variation, I'm going to put some stones on there in a second. So here we go, using the slate uh, stuff from the GW basing kit, as well as one of the resin uh, skull pieces from the, the fantasy basing kit. So there's just some large slate, medium slate, and some fine stuff as well. And that's basically how it's going to lay out. Um, you'll notice there, I think I mentioned this before, how these skulls actually fit inside the base. For some reason, none of the GW ones that they've posted pictures of managed to do that. But uh, mine had no problem fitting on the base. 
Uh, now I'm using some rotting flesh here and I'm just going over the top areas. So trying to uh, even out the highlights um, gives it a bit of a greenish tone to maybe make it a little more uh, putrid looking um, and also brings up the, uh, the highlights there after the wash. Um, finishing off here I'm going to be using it just a bit of an off-white um, and uh, it's hard to tell on these pictures um, but in person it just brings out the, the brightness a little bit more. Oh, cut it off a bit there, sorry. That's blood red, so GW blood red I'm layering up in the top there and then blaze orange just along the bottom and this is going to get a bunch of layers of bow red wash. So just doing the same as the gemstones that I normally do, so dark red and then about halfway down get the blood red and then blaze orange right at the bottom and a little bit of skull white just at the tops just a single dot there um, there's other ways of doing that but I find this is nice simple and straightforward and gives you a nice kind of a glossy look without actually being glossy okay here we go with the uh, base I'm mixing in some coffee grinds and uh, scorched brown paint Actually, I think I already did the coffee grinds, but this is just a watered-down scorched brown paint just to cover everything up, including the rocks, um, to give me a nice base to start with. Uh, this is Bestial Brown covering up everything. It's kind of a really heavy dry brush. And I'm uh, going to be doing a bit of a graveyard earth on top of that. Uh, actually, sorry, not graveyard earth, that um, bleached bone, just to bring out the top edge highlights. Uh, now I'm using some triads here, so the bone triad for the bones, funny enough. Um, so the bone shadow covers everything, aged bone, basically everything except the deepest cracks, and then polished bone just on the very edges. And then stone triad is what I used for the stones, same idea. Um, it's funny how much time you have to spend painting rocks to look like rocks, um, but it actually helps a lot. So paint the whole thing, shadow stone, and then most of the top surface is stone gray and then just the edges with the weathered stone. Uh, working on these these uh, roots here, so that's graveyard earth on top of the scorched brown, just a slight highlight on it. And uh, obviously did all the, the bone bits back here as well. And I'll show you the goblin colors in a second. So here we go. Uh, the web, I decided to do that all ID and dark sun and it's going to get some washes and highlights uh, so it won't actually look yellow but it'll be a yellowish brown um, and here's the the green triad I use so peacock green is the, the dark one which is a lot like orc hide shade and then uh, brilliant green which is what you see here viper green is going to go next and then there's another moth green that's much like the uh, scorpion green for GW we'll just go on the edges and that gives you a nice bright green goblin Okay, so uh, Devlin Mud Wash over everything here, and the spiders, they're just pure black and rainy gray, which is the same as Chaos Black and Codex Gray. And uh, so just a really light dry brush on there, just kind of an overbrush, just to bring out some of the detail. Here we go with the moth green on these guys, and they're almost done, just a little bit of teeth in their eyes, and they'll be all set, as well as the webbing. So the webbing was actually the uh, a leather brown triad. Um, I show that later on. I'll, you'll see what colors those were, but just trying to get some of the the brightness out, but also making it look a little bit like there's uh, some shadows in there and whatnot. So there's the base that actually took far too long, but I guess it's the biggest base I've ever done um, for a Warhammer unit. So that's okay. It's gonna give you lots of you get a lot of attention on the battlefield. So this is just some static grass and I'm gonna add some uh, tufts as well later and some of the extra spiders. I just painted them up the same way as this and super glued them on. And the the tufts, there's the army painter, swamp tuft, uh, jungle tuft, and forest grass I think it's called. I just did a bunch of different ones just around to give it a bit of variation. Okay now we're on to the howda. So again I painted it uh, a a dark brown which is much like scorch brown um, it's actually just a spray paint from Walmart it's a camouflage dark brown um, and then I started on to the foundation paints okay so we have Kemri brown for all the brown bits it's not brown bits that's obvious the uh, the bone bits uh, that's what I'm going to use it's very similar to the uh, the bone shadow that I use for Reaper 
and then Deneb Stone for all the, the web. So obviously I used a different web color for the base, but it's going to end up looking very similar. And uh, ID and Dark Sun is what I used for the end bits on the wood. Uh, sorry, that's out of focus. The focus is back there somewhere. Okay, and then everything got Devlin Mud. So um, I actually highlighted the uh, the wood as well a bit with the Graveyard Earth, and it got the Devlin Mud too. But you can see how how that changed the look of everything here. And I uh, started on the goblin, and there you can see that web ball. Okay, so there's the uh, the Reaper Bone Triad. I'm working on the Bone Shadow here. So after the Devil in Mud goes on the Kemery Brown, I uh, did the Bone Shadow again, so it kind of brings it back up to almost the base color, but now I have a, a deeper shadow. Uh, now we got the... Uh, oh, what's going on here? There we go got the aged bone coming on here and as well I'm working on the uh, the different colors here on the the webbing and the polished bone now on just the edges the uh, this is what I used for the webbing so the tan leather amber golden golden blonde the webbing actually took probably the longest thing of this whole model there's so many little teeny bits of web wrapped around all the wood and it just took forever so that's the triad I used um, Basically, you put the emphasis on the golden blonde, just a, it's like a yellowy white, um, and it brings out the lightness and everything. Okay, back to the goblins. Uh, same triad here, the peacock, brilliant, and viper green. Uh, I believe that's just the brilliant green on there right now. As well, on the, uh, the feathers, I did the deep red, reaper deep red, and blood red. Um, and that's going to get a bowel red wash and a GW blood red kind of overbrush. Uh, there's a bit of uh, Phoenix Red from Reaper as well on there. Just tried to keep those things simple. Um, okay, so here we go. I'm almost done painting everything on there and I wanted to glue it all together. So, uh, as you can see in the background, I got Gorilla Glue and I used some uh, Super Glue Activator. And what I did is just a little bit of glue on each one of these things here. Um, the front part that goes here actually broke off when I was painting it, so, whoops, I uh, didn't glue it well enough, so it's going to get super glued, um, and that was attached to the flinger, and then there's a piece that comes on the back here that's going to go on after. So, anyways, this actually worked out well, because this way I was able to make sure that every little piece there touched the spider and got glued down properly. Um, it fits together really well if you are careful when you're gluing the plastic, um, and so I, I put a little super glue and then touched it with a little bit of uh, super glue activator just to give it an instant bond. Um, and there you can see how, how well everything everything sits on there really nicely. One of the benefits of plastic as opposed to metal. <laughs> so uh, this piece here gets glued over there and there and then on the front. Um, and then the spider that's holding the flinger down at the back there. Um, the only thing left to paint is just a bit of detail on the red and uh, some of the greens here aren't quite done yet. Uh, all the skull bits, uh, they got the same details as the rest there, just the, the reaper skull triad and uh, the stone that's in this giant skull mouth. Um, that's actually a giant skull. Uh, that's just the, the weathered stone triad as well. And uh, yeah, just another view. Okay, gluing things together now. So this piece here where this guy's standing on, it uh, gets glued on the back here and also gets glued onto the spider at the back. It's uh, it's going to be a little tricky to, to keep that in place long term if I have to transport this much. So uh, something to keep in mind. Um, transporting this guy is going to be a little tricky. Yeah, it's just this whole piece that sticks up at the back here is stuck on right here and here. So I can see that easily coming off because those, those top pieces there stick up really high. And here you go, you've seen a bit of the detail on these guys. Um, one of the nice things actually with the eyes is uh, hard, to, hard to show probably for me, but the eye, there's actually like a recess around it. So when I paint the top of the eye, the center, um, there's a little bit of a recess around it there just inside the, the socket 
to make it it makes it easier to paint the the eye itself. So I got Viper Green coming on here, and uh, as you can see, I'm not really blending much with these guys. They're really tiny, and they're not going to get a lot of detail or a lot of attention. Um, some pretty cool poses though. And uh, after the Moth Green goes on the end, which is the same as Scorpion Green, they're going to get a bit of a well. I don't think I show this, but they uh, they do get a thraca green wash, and that just helps blend these colors all together a little bit. And you can see what they look like. So I paint. I did glue two of these guys down first, and then the rest get glued down later. Um, but that was just to to simplify things. I thought I might try gluing them all down, but I decided halfway after gluing these two that. The uh, the only way to do it would be doing them separately, so they're getting glued down later. This is an unfortunate uh, joint here in the carapace. I, I end up gluing a spider over that. Um, kind of helps a little bit, or maybe draws more attention to it. We'll see. There's the spider there. Okay, and I'm getting ready just to glue everything together now. Okay, so I have glued everything together, and we're all done. So there's from the front view, and I'm going to cycle all the way around, and then I'll do you some close-ups. Um, so this is a 100 millimeter by uh, 150, which is the same as five 20 millimeter bases by seven and a half. So you know, five times seven is 35. So it's the same as like 35 night goblins, you know, plus a little bit. It's an absolutely giant thing on the table and it's going to be pretty cool to see. Um, now with two line of sight it's going to be obviously a big target uh, but that's okay because it's a really cool model and not ridiculously expensive in points. And you can see some of the spiders that I glued on the bottom there um, just all around. I used up all eight of them. There's one up there as well. Once I was finished with everything, I gave it all a spray of uh, matte, uh, like a matte varnish. But uh, it still has a little semi-gloss look to it. Okay, so here's some close-ups. There's the, the mouth of the spider there. Uh, looking at the back there. The flinger detail. Um, I think I mentioned this in the other video, but in case you didn't see that, uh, the option for the flinger, if you didn't put that on, you could do the uh, the shaman, and he would end up going at the front here. Uh, this whole kind of assembly would be down at the front over here, and uh, you wouldn't have anything back here, and then the big web gate thing or whatever it is there. Um, if you just do the plain giant spider without the flinger, you would have a bit of a, a stand that kind of goes in the middle here, and you get rid of this thing at the back. There's those goblins at the bottom there, all wrapped up in web. So here's detail of the various guys. Uh, this guy kind of looks like a big captain, throwing a spear. Guy with a bow and arrow. Uh, this guy is actually about to cut the the web, uh, the the spider web that's holding back the flinger. So I guess he is the uh, guy in charge of shooting, and here's the the loader guy at the back shooting off arrows. Another guy close to the back. This guy is nearer to the front. And some guy shaking his bow. Uh, there's those details of the spiders underneath. You can see them kind of crawling out of the, the holes there. There's some skulls kind of in there that are hard to get at. And uh, yeah, just a couple spiders here and there. Not really sure what that's supposed to be. Kind of like the Turvagon, it spits out uh, termagants in 40k, but spider-like. Uh, there's some detail in the mouth there, you can't really see it in this shot. There you go, front shot again of the whole thing. And just to give you a bit of a comparison, so there's five night goblins wide, that's the same width as that. Um, this unit is only five deep though, so it's not uh, not quite as deep. It's, just for scale comparison, and there's uh, the 25 millimeter bases, so that's six wide. Obviously, that's wider than this guy here. Um, 
just give you an idea of size. And one last one, the giant. So it's taller than a giant, and obviously the base is much, much wider. Which means more things will get in contact with it. Anyways, hope you liked the video, and uh, yeah, come back for more. Take care.